uh, thank you for your time. This is Liang He from uh, University of Colorado, Denver. And we are talking about a new vehicle immobilizer to control or maybe uh, uh, protect our cars. And this is a collaborative work from, uh, with Dr. Kang Xin from University of Michigan. And before we start, I, I start to talk to the design, all the story. So one question to, to, to think for everyone. Assuming we, we, if we have the perfect autonomous vehicle, okay, as in the previous talk and maybe the next one, do you think we deserve something better than the keys or key faults we, we, we currently have? So with that question, our story begins with the increasing auto sales. Unfortunately, this is the case. Okay, so in 2019, uh, we have a huge number of uh, auto theft compared, uh, increase compared to 2018. And then every year we keep have increased auto theft. And also this increasing is become much larger and larger. And then starting from last year, at least according to the information, the statistics I saw, Colorado has become the worst state in the US. Okay. So, the one con key contributor to this auto thefts, of course, that we have careless drivers. That always happens. But something different from 10 years ago or 20 years ago is our car keys or key fobs is no, no longer secure anymore. They can be hacked. Okay. And then that makes a very, uh, let's say, unfortunate or maybe, let's say, some kind of surprising fact that we, we design the keys or key fobs to protect our cars from being stolen. But actually, right now, they have been hacked by people to steal our cars. Here we list uh, some kind of a accident, several accidents happened with car keys or key fobs in 2019. Of course, it's a long list, but let's say two, informa two key messages. Almost all major automakers suffer from these several vulnerabilities. And second one, we have this accident from both white hat uh, uh, researchers and also black hat attackers. That means auto thieves. And we have done a user, uh, let's say, uh, uh, questionnaire to check uh, the counter's opinion about, hey, do you like the car keys? If not, what are the limitations? And the result can be categorized into, in general, two categories. The first one, car keys is not really, let's say, powerful in uh, protecting auto thefts. And also, to use car keys or key fobs, there is a little bit of maintenance. We need to carry, we need to make sure the battery do not die, something like that. And if customers are not happy with car keys, then we have the well-justified reasons automakers are not happy with it. Actually, almost all major, uh, major automakers, Tesla, Ford, GM, BMW, they are developing some kind of other solutions to either improve the car keys or key fobs or even replace it. And one very common one is right now ma many of the keys we can use phones as a second factor authentication to control the car, right? And because of that, the market is increasing, okay? So almost 19 billion by, uh, by the end of 2017. So let's look at a little bit technically why key or key fob are no longer secure. So when we are using the key to control, to start our car, two, in, in general, high level, two process happen. The first one is the key talk to the transponder ECU inside the car to do the authentication. And once that, that authentication is done through this wireless, external wireless communication, and if that authentication is successful, the transponder ECU will talk to the engine control, control ECU inside the car through this in-vehicle network to say, hey, now you, are, you can start. And unfortunately, both this external wireless communication and internal in-vehicle network is hackable. Okay, wireless communication, we know we can, people can hack it using a different types of jamming or replay attack. And actually in this year, so it, it will happen in August, next month, uh, in the Black Hat USA, there will be a talk from, from NUS, uh, I'm not sure, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I believe one of the, 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 the the group members are, are here. Uh, to hack this wireless communication, we do not even need to really do the jamming. And also for the in-vehicle network, we definitely know this OBD2 port is open accessible. It's not secure by design. 
And then we know card keys or key fobs are not secure because it heavily involved these two things, both of them are not secure. Then why, can, why don't we design something else? And the key information here, we want to design something that is in physical isolation from these cyber attack vectors. And our solution or answer to this idea is the 12 volt battery. The 12 volt battery that has been progressively deployed in, uh, in uh, all cars. And, and this idea is based on two observations, not surprisingly. The first one is we cannot start a car without sufficient battery power. And because of it, we can control the battery's power output to use battery as a actuator to either allow or disallow the car to start to drive. And then the second observation is the battery is the foundation of the 12 volt power line network inside the car. And this 12 volt power line network can serve as a communication channel that is in physical isolation from in vehicle network, from the external wireless communication and can be used for the driver to talk to the battery. So, and because of that, we can use the battery as the sensors to collect the driver input of uh, uh, the, the authentication information. So following that two observations, we have this design. What we call the BLUES is a battery enabled vehicle immobilizer. And this BLUES is a, a second factor authentication complementary to car keys and it overcomes its several vulnerabilities without requiring drivers to carry any additional token, phones or keys. And in Belus consider two physical or embedded modules. The first one is a front-end dangle. It interacts with the driver. And then the second one is a back-end dangle, that, a back-end module that's installed onto the 12-volt uh, battery. This front-end will talk to the back-end through a customized power line communication system. And then the uh, back-end controller will control the, the power capacity of the battery based on the authentication results. And Belus is also used the four different uh, alarm modules to detect some kind of a abnormal operation to trigger an alarm in, in those cases. Also use let's say, rechargeable power supplies to remove the burden, reduce the burden of drivers in terms of maintenance. So I will briefly talk these four modules uh, in the next. So the, the core part is communication. So this power line communication is an encrypted one. It's a DC-based communication. And in this communication, the dangle, the front end, is acting as a transmitter. And the back end, the controller, is uh, acting as a receiver. And these two are connected through this uh, tri-volt uh, power line network without requiring to deploy any additional wiring. OK, uh, the communication is a three layer architecture. The application layer handles the, the accepted of the, the authentication information and matching the password. And the, the core part is the modulation layer. We need to handle a lot of design factors and also the encryption. And the, the last one, the physical layer or circuit layer actually transmit and receive this, this uh, uh, current signal from the battery. So power line communication conceptually is not new. But to you apply that thing to cars, we need to solve some kind of specific problem because we are applying to cars, including do we want to use a battery voltage or battery current as, a, as the carrier of the signal? Uh, do we uh, want to use which kind of commonly used modulation scheme? Uh, frequency, okay? We want to read, avoid interference, interference between our own uh, configure, uh, communication and also the power consumption of the car. And also magnitude, we, if we have a larger magnitude, the communication is more reliable but consumes more power. Uh, symbol duration, longer a symbol that is more reliable but increases delay. Encryption, must be lightweighted. We do not have very, very uh, powerful communication, uh, computation power. And also the nature of this system make it a asynchronized communication system. And so we need to identify and construct the preambles. And we need to do the sleep and activate the transition to save power. So a lot of design details I will not cover and it definitely is in the paper. The second module is a power controller. Okay, we 
reduce the power of the battery to disable driving, and then we enable the, uh, restore the battery power to enable the driving. So that is the control logic. This control logic is realized using a circuit design. And the key idea of this circuit is we have two paths. We have two power paths connecting uh, the battery and the car. One is the low power, the other is high, high power. Low power is good to turn on the light, turn on the fan, but not cranking the engine. And the high power path is good enough to do everything. And then by controlling which power path is, is in use, we can do this uh, dis disable or enable of the uh, vehicle driving. Uh, and then we have a full state control diagram here. Some examples. In the first case, we are using a low power battery. And we are trying to crank the engine when the fan, the light, is turned on. And you can see this, the cranking is failed immediately. In the second case, in the middle figure, we are still trying to crank it with a low power battery. But in this case, we try to turn off as much as possible the electrical component of the car. So you can see it still failed, but actually it struggled a little bit. And in the last case, we restore the power of the battery and the cranking successfully just as in the Euro case. Uh, you also use a set of alarms to detect a, 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 some kind of not so good operation, including, for example, people may try to crank in the engine without passing the authentication. Removes the dangles, okay? And then uh, we designed these four different alarms in the form of a simply uh, low complexity circuit. And the reason why is we want to achieve a quick detection and also reliable detection. And the circuit is shown here, I will not really go to details. The concept, is the, let's say the uh, basic idea is we want to uh, disable or bypassing the alarm pass when everything is normal. But if something abnormal happened, we want to trigger this alarm as shown in the very simplified uh, circuit there. Last but not least, we have this uh, uh, rechargeable power supply. So the power supply of Belus will be recharged automatically when we are driving the car. One question to consider is, we need to also charge the 12 volt battery when driving the car. And if we are charging additional power supplies, do we still have the sufficient power to, to maintain a full power in the 12 volt battery? And definitely the answer is yes. Okay, at least there are opportunities to do that because in many of the cases, our car, the power gener uh, power, the capability of power generation of our alternator is not fully used. Uh, comparison with existing or some other potential solutions. I will not go to the details, but definitely this, uh, there's a lot of can, can be uh, discussed. So summary of evaluations. So we have prototyped, actually iterated the prototype and tested on eight cars, including gasoline cars, hybrid cars, and electric vehicles. And the, in, in, the worst case performance is over 99.9% .9 of authentication accuracy. And in this experiment, we covered very cold in ambient because that's, that's bad for battery. And also covered very old batteries, more than 10 years aged. And also we have this cover the full voltage cycle of this uh, battery. Nine volt, that is almost a fully discharged. 13 volt, that is a fully charged uh, battery. One thing, one last thing to mention is this thing, this idea is can be also extended to engine control. Okay, so following a similar idea, we can use power line communication to do authentication and using the power control to do whether the, 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 the car door is lock, uh, unlockable or not. And the point of doing this is with this kind of extension, we can evolve or improve Belus to a secondary, a second factor authentication solution to a solution that can be, can replace existing car case. And by doing that, we can imagine a new, let's say paradigm of vehicle usage that we don't need to carry anything and it is secure. Okay. Take away message. So first thing, we are in an ever increasing connected world and we are suffering from increasing cyber, secure, uh, cyber uh, security risks. Okay, and then because of that, we, we, want, we want to take it somehow a different position to say maybe now is the time to rethink something called physical security. 
Okay, so the, and particularly what we are trying to do is this physical isolation from common cyber attack vectors. So that is secure by design. And we find this battery could be a potential solution here by using battery as the sensors or actuators. And this is one work in this direction. And we have also other work uh, for using, using battery, following the similar idea, using battery to detect the intrusion to cars, intrusion to drones, and right now we are also working on detection intrusion to the satellite. Uh, it's, it's a collaborative work with NASA. And also using battery to do driver authentication, to do access control, and also even ambient sensing. Uh, we, there is a sh short demo video you can uh, find online by scanning this uh, QR code. And also we have a poster and also a demo later after this session. Thank you.